How many of you are serious? How many of you are going to really not just go away from here and say, well, that was a good message, wasn't it? It wasn't a good message, brother. It was a challenge to your heart from Almighty God to change your whole way of life. It wasn't just a nice three-point sermon. It was a word from God to your heart to change your whole way of life so that your life will change more than any three-point sermon ever did to your life. That you change your whole value system. Look at Jesus. And if you, if you don't agree with something that I say, go to the Bible and see how Jesus was like. His attitude to praise. His attitude to money. His attitude to sinful people. How he was merciful to them. He was not in competition with anybody. How careful he was with his speech. You know, a heavenly person is very careful with his speech. An earthly person is absolutely careless. He doesn't care what rubbish comes out of his mouth. He's spewing out garbage morning, noon and night. Uh, Jesus was very careful. You know, there were times we read when he was just quiet. Once when they were provoking him, provoking him in the case of the woman caught in adultery, he took a long time to reply. And he just bent his head and wrote something on the sand and he, he hadn't, didn't have a clear word from his father. Then he got a word from the father, just tell them, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. So he got up and said, he who is without sin, cast the first stone and they all went away. You know, one sentence from the father, instead of preaching half an hour sermon. <clears throat> That's how we need to be. A heavenly man is like that. He doesn't speak immediately. He thinks and waits which most earthly people do not know how to do. And wait still, he's got something useful to say. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 4, <clears throat> it's one of those words where you find the word always. I'll give you a good bit of homework, those who are serious about Bible study. Take a concordance and look up the word always. Rejoice always. Always bear in your body the dying of Jesus. Pray always. There are certain things we must do always. And here's one of those things we must do always. Colossians 4, 6. <clears throat> Let your speech always be with grace. Seasoned with salt. So that you may know how you should respond to each person. Now... Supposing you're invited for a meal somewhere and as you put the first morsel of, mouth, of food into your mouth, say, hey, this doesn't have enough salt. And you say, uh, there's, no, there's no crime in saying, could you please pass the salt? Because you know, some people like more salt and some people like less. So you say, please pass the salt and usually the salt is there on every table according to each man's taste, and you put the salt, and then you enjoy the meal. You know how you can detect immediately when there's no salt? Our taste buds are so smart. It must be like that in our speech also. The same tongue that can detect no salt or salt should also be able to detect in our, detect in our speech and what comes out of our tongue there was no salt in that word. That means there was no grace in it. Do you detect it? I mean, if you can detect it before it comes out, even better. As you're about to speak something, say, hey, I think I should add a little more salt to that sentence before I speak it to this person. Maybe to your wife. You know how blessed your wife will be if you have a little salt in all your speech? I mean, a little grace. Or how blessed your husband will be before the words come out, just add a little salt. It makes a tremendous difference, just a few grains. Tremendous difference. Why don't we do it? It's so cheap. It's so cheap, so easy. Just a little grace. <clears throat> Always your speech must be seasoned. You know how our Indian curries Terrible without seasoning. If you get a curry without seasoning, you'd say, well, no, thank you. I'm not particularly hungry today, you know. <laughs> the fact is, you 
just can't stick the taste of that food without any seasoning. Our speech is like that. Let it always be seasoned. Jesus was like that. He said, be careful with your mouth because by your words you'll be justified. We all know justification by faith. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 36 to 39, by your speech you'll be justified. By your words. Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. It's very easy to find out what's in a person's heart. Just listen to his speech the whole day. I will tell you what's in his heart. Because he can't keep it inside. You cannot keep... I mean, you can sit here with a zip on your mouth in the meetings. Uh, that's only for a little while. You can't keep it on for too long. But if I can secretly listen to what's going on in your home and different places when you're in the bus, in the train, in the office, I'll tell you what's in your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And Jesus spoke out of the abundance of his heart. So I'm not saying just control your tongue. Watch your heart. Because it's from the heart. The salt must be in the heart. A heavenly man is a person who is very careful. I know the number of times I've had to repent. I've spoken to somebody and I've just gone away. In two seconds, the Holy Spirit says to me, that's not the way Jesus would have spoken. Or you could have said the same thing a little more graciously. And... I feel like getting away somewhere by myself and having a little weeping session before the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Help me. When will I learn? <clears throat> but it's getting better because I want to major on majors. There are many, many areas like this, my brothers and sisters, and you know the areas in your life. We need to seek God. Think how Jesus prayed for the anointing of the Holy Spirit when he was baptized because he wanted to go out to serve the Father in the power of the Holy Spirit not with all the good life he had lived for 30 years many of us have lived good lives and we think we can serve the Father like that Jesus did not with a good life he prayed for the anointing of the Holy Spirit so that he would have the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit to serve the Father and perhaps you and I have failed depending on money depending on music depending on Many other things other than the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. We need to repent of that. Jesus did not depend on <clears throat> television broadcasting to spread his message. He depended on the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't, de didn't depend on the newspapers giving him a good report. He depended on the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't depend on, you know, clever points in his sermons. He didn't depend on having good musicians to prime up people before he spoke. No, he depended on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I really believe we need to seek God and say, God, help us to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit once again like Jesus did. Heavenly people are like that. So there are many other areas. I've just touched on a few. I just want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, recognize the destination God has already determined for you to become like Christ. To live the way he lived, to serve others the way he served others, to evangelize people the way he evangelized, to teach people the way he taught, to bless people the way he blessed, to bless every home that you ever enter the way he blessed every home that he entered. Think if every one of us sitting here are going to change our value system from today. Can you imagine what our church is going to be in another year? Can you imagine what's going to happen? It's be like the burning bush. People will st stop and say, hey, this is different. May God help us. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. <clears throat> While our heads are bowed, I want you to forget about everybody else. Just think that you're standing before Jesus Christ today. Imagine that you're standing at the judgment seat of Christ right now. And you're standing before him. And he's asking you, what did you do with that message you heard that Sunday morning? This is the judgment seat of Christ you're standing before. What are you going to reply to him? It's going to happen one day. You're going to stand before him. And a lot of things that appear very important to you right now will not be important in that day. And a lot of things that you think are not so important today will be very, very important in that day. Change your value system now. <laughs> So that you don't have any regret in that day when you stand before Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Master. 
Heavenly Father, I believe you have spoken to many hearts this morning and I pray that it will produce a change in our life. I, produce, I pray it will produce a change in our homes and in our church. We humbly ask in the merit in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.